Hey there everyone, it's Michael Dugal with eXp Realty. This is your resource for real estate information here in the greater Toronto area. I'm gonna to share with you the most up-to-date numbers with respect to our market. We're gonna cover uh, the average sale price and the general strength of the market. The first chart I wanna show you is this here, which displays the detached homes in the city of Toronto. And looking at it, the most recently reported average sale price was only $1,636,000. And I say only because uh, the week prior on June 9th, the average sale price was $1,812,000, which suggests that the market is very volatile at the moment. We have found that there have been less sales specifically for luxury homes. So properties that have been listed for over $2 million are taking longer to sell or they're selling far from their asking price. Looking at the market about 90 days ago, uh, the average price was $1,677,000. So we can see that it is, um, it has been somewhat stable. There are weeks when it is much higher. There are weeks when it is much lower. But generally speaking, if you are a seller considering selling your home, you're still looking at likely selling in a very short amount of time and probably over the asking price provided that the home is priced right. At the earlier portion of the year, the average price was trending upwards, but no, now it's pretty much stabilized somewhere between like the $1,650,000 mark to $1,700,000. You'll see two lines on the chart, yellow being 2021, blue being 2020. So there is a, still a slight gap between the yellow and the blue line, which suggests that the prices are pretty much higher than what they were around this time of the year, last year in 2020. Um, moving on to this next chart, which shows the number of sales this past week and what we've experienced throughout the past few months. There were only 220 sales reported. And similarly, um, the number of properties that were selling above their asking price was as well at its low point. There were only 62% of homes that had been sold over their asking price, where going back to the middle of March, it was about 80% of new listings were selling over their asking price. So, so far, what we're looking at for detached homes is a slightly lower average sale price. There are less sales, um, less properties are selling above their asking price. And take a look at this chart here, which shows us that there were as well um, fewer new listings that came on the market. There were only 409 new listings, which is fairly uncommon around this time of the year, um, especially mid-June. It's usually July and August when it's a little bit slow in terms of new listings coming to the marketplace as sellers are often out of town, agents are on vacation. There's just less activity that happens, but this is usually a more active time of the year. So this is surprising information. However, there are still a good supply of listings. There were 1,475 active listings reported the week of June 16th. And you can see that this number has been somewhat stable ever since the beginning of May. Uh, May 5th, there were as well 1,460 active listings. So for buyers, you can go out there with some confidence knowing that you should likely have um, a good number of homes to choose from versus the market back in the beginning of March when, when there were much less homes to choose from. So this could be a reason why there are less homes that are selling above their asking price. We're seeing that, that the days on market has been increasing depending on the price range and depending on the specific area. As shown here in the months of inventory, our months of inventory is 1.19. This number is an indicator of the general strength of the market. If it's better for buyers, we're looking at a higher months of inventory, but if it's a better market for sellers, then the months of inventory is a lower number. So it's fairly stable here. Back um, ever since May 5th, we've been looking at a month's inventory of 1.1. Now it's only 1.19. So as the price range has been somewhat stable, so has the month's inventory. Whereas back in the middle of March, when the market was best for sellers, there was a month's inventory of only 0.6 for detached homes in Toronto. Next, let's take a look at the condo market, starting with the average price. We're looking at the weekly activity ever since uh, December 2020 and the average price back then was only $608,000. Now it has gone up. It's not the highest it has been all year, but it's at $686,000. Um, the week prior, it was $766,000, which was an all time high for the condo market. So why has this happened? It's hard to say. It could be that less luxury condos were being sold in the marketplace. I wouldn't jump to any conclusions and say prices have dropped as it's still too early to tell. And like I mentioned with the detached market, it is somewhat volatile. We're finding that as well in the condo market. 
In this next chart here, you can see the difference between the average sale price in 2020 versus 2021. So the numbers on 2020 are reflected in the blue line, whereas the numbers for 2021 are in the yellow line. So there's a small gap, which shows us that there is a slight increase in the average price. I have found that this really does depend on the area. If you have a condo in York region, like Vaughn or Markham, it's likely that it's experienced a lot of appreciation where if it's a downtown Toronto condo, um, you've probably only experienced maybe like five to 8% appreciation depending on where you are and the price range. Something definitely worth pointing out though is the months of inventory, specifically for the condo market. As shown in this chart over here, the last week, the months of inventory was at a reported 1.59. And as we look at this week by week, uh, tracing back all the way from March 24th, we can see that the months of inventory has been increasing, which shows us that most likely the condo market could be actually slightly coming down versus coming up if it is to continue on this trend where we have uh, new listings accelerating at a faster pace than the number of sales reported because that is what's happening right now. So it'll be really interesting to see what takes place in the condo market, specifically the next month, because the COVID lockdown restrictions have lifted to some extent and buyers should feel a little bit more comfortable going ahead and looking at property and buying. At the same time, a lot of the building amenities may start to open now, like indoor pools, and the rental market could actually increase. So since a good portion of condominiums in Toronto and the greater Toronto area are investment properties. If the average cost to rent does increase, then these condo units may be more attractive for buyers, specifically investors, which could lead to having a higher average sale price. I really hope you found this information helpful. If you did, then consider subscribing. Go ahead and share the channel with somebody who you know that may as well find the information helpful. If you are a ambitious real estate agent looking to connect for opportunity, then do contact me. Let's talk about your business and what we can do to collaborate. I'm currently with eXp Realty and I absolutely love it. And if you're considering buying buying or selling, call me, call me, call me. My contact information is in the description box below and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.